to compare BN Penang and Kapagatan? What is the strength and weaknesses of BN Penang? I think for the last one year, it is also an unprecedented uh, uh, changes. Uh, or now because they like to use the word transform. I still still words change. Uh, but otherwise you say I uncut all the way, transform. <laughs> the changes is, look, we have never been able to sit down together in the past and say that, look, this is, this is what we want. This is the common thing that we agreed. So, for the last four years, I would say, you know, the grammar was late. To be fair to the past leaders, people like Tantri Kosukun, Dr. Tengona, they have laid the foundation of cooperation amongst the complement parties. So when I came in, there's this foundation, this understanding. I enhance it. All the activities were discussed in open. What I, 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 I want uh, to achieve were discussed in open, getting their views. So when we go down to say one particular constituency, it is the Barisan teams that went down. It is not just me alone going to the function. We also we also want to we also tell them look, you have to invite all the component party members. Whatever differences you have in the past, you still have to call them. Less party flag, only Barisan flags. The last three months we say no party flag, only Barisan flag. And that has been ongoing and it is received by the ground. I mean, as I said, in the past, you ask them to put on Barisan t-shirt to the function. They are so scared to, to wear it from their house to the function. They will come to the function site and they start to change. But today, they, today it is different. Today is different. The unity, the understanding, the give and take, the equivalence of understanding of power sharing, is so much glaring now in Barisan Penang than in the past. Everyone has to learn to respect each other, to swallow your pride, even though you may have the biggest seat. I mean, Abno has swallowed their pride. They have, they have come to agreement that, look, this is the real thing called power sharing. You may have 11, but if you don't get the cooperation from the rest of us, you are not getting anywhere. So are we. So we need to work together and understand each other and say, look, we, we are all tied together. We are, we, any individual one of us will not be able to win the election. It's not winnable, but it has to be an effort, a team effort between all of us. This is a strength that we have now, opponent, you know. So in that sense, we we now know very well what we want. I mean, Pakatan, for all you say, I mean, I'm, they are my opponent, but they have a very clear vision. They want to walk into Putrajaya. So we cannot have a, we cannot have a vision where MCA has theirs, Krakan has ours, uh, Amno has their no. It has to be a common objective that we want. And all now agree, okay, this is the way. We are unprecedentedly, we have never we have never had meetings so frequent in the past as now. Over the past 11 months, we have been meeting every week. Surprisingly, when the election is near, is near we have not met for the last two weeks. Yeah, because everything has been late. Everything has already been late, already, already planned everything. So, it's now waiting for implementation. It is not about coming to the drawing board and start to discuss, no. It's already done, everything done. It's just when the, when the parliament is dissolved, then implementation will come in. And install in the manifesto, the actual manifesto. Yeah, I think that's better. That is. Manifesto will be something that we are touching on the 
uh, quality of life, we are touching on the needs to provide you know, for the um, middle income family, the needs to look after the uh, rural uh, development, the needs to look at uh, uh, the, the senior citizens' needs, um, the needs to look at uh, social housing. They will be, they will be all in, included in the manifesto. There are, I think, about 12 areas that we, we will be uh, uh, announcing to the people. So is it better than the Pakatan's uh, manifesto? The people have to judge whether it's better or it's not. Of course, you ask the fellow who sells uh, flowers, he will say his flower is the best. So I, I cannot be I cannot be saying that mine is the best. Let the people uh, compare between the Pakatan and our manifesto. Yeah, but maybe you can like, describe what areas are, is in your manifesto that is not in Pakatan's manifesto. Would you like to just pick a point? Just one point? Uh, just one point, yeah. The, the, the needs to prepare facilities for women to come back to the uh, labour market or human resource market uh, after they, they set up their family. You know, how, how we will be able to assist them to get back into the human resource uh, market. At this point in time, many women who have to sacrifice their works after they have their first child, or second child, they still have the kind of capacity. But then the market, uh, the human resource market has, has a lapse. And how are you going to fit them into these situations? Uh, and I, I can tell you today, with the high cost of childcare, um, one a couple a family with two children would deny the mother from from entering into the human resource market but then it will also affect the the family income because the breadwinner may not be able to have to have enough to sustain but then because the child care cost has gone so high one one child would, would now cost about seven to eight hundred ringgit a month you know, in terms of childcare needs, you know, that exclude their their provision, their uh, clothing, and all other needs. You know, so if two is thousand four, you know, so the family will have to sacrifice the wife and say, okay, you 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 take care of them in the house, and you save one thousand four. But then the other expenses has been on the increase. How are we going to help all this group to enter back? This they still prefer to enter back. Say after five six years, they find that. Well, you don't have to. You don't have to rely so much on the full time daycare nannies. So, the moment they want to enter into the market, they have a, they have they already they have already lost the five year skills that they should have. So, how are we going to help this? So, we are going to address this as well. Have you got a chance to look at the Penang paradigm? Oh yes. What do you think of it? Full of contradictory with the manifesto, Pakatan manifesto. Yeah, the federal level because they, they haven't reviewed the state levels. Mm -hmm. Penang paradigm, what? Penang paradigm is not manifesto. Part of your manifesto will, con will contain what is inside Penang paradigm. Otherwise, that is your major framework, you know. That is your major framework where you are relying on. Our manifesto, we rely on our Penang framework because that is the main bulk of the of the of the of the projects policies that you are going to implement. Manifesto is just to extract it and put it. So it cannot be different from their Penang paradigm. <coughs> they are talking about 4,000 uh, uh, income. Uh, manifest, Pakata Manifesto say minimum income is 4,000 ringgit. Penang paradigm is talking about 770 ringgit. It's too vast a difference. It's contrary to your own uh, Pakatan Manifesto.